Well, good evening, Crime Stoppers. Hey, it's Morgan Wright, CEO and Chief Crime Fighter here at Connected to the Case. And uh, right now, you guys should be seeing us live on audio, or actually live on video. You should be hearing the audio. Sean's checking for me on here. We've got a social stream up, so if you guys have any questions, uh, pop over to the social stream, over to the chat, throw your questions in there. Sean and I will answer them for you while we're on the air. And then, uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for being on here tonight. This session is being recorded. Um, if you if uh, if you miss it or you want to take notes and replay it later, we can certainly do that. So uh, this will be available for you just shortly right after this is done. We'll be sending out some more links. So what we're going to do tonight, first of all, we've uh, looked for volunteers to help us. Uh, one of the things we're going to do tonight is we're going to actually introduce you to what is connected to the case. I just actually finished up with a great phone call with Facebook and their PR department. They really liked what we were doing. Uh, they want to tell a story about this. So a lot of good things are starting to happen. I think you guys will see why. I want to tell you a little bit about the history behind Connected to the Case and talk to you, our army of volunteers, about how you can help law enforcement solve crime, return the missing, and protect our children by connecting the known to the unknown using social media. Now, I was going to wear my great Connected to the Case shirt, but seeing as how we've got this, this is actually a green screen behind me here, but um, this is some of the neat stuff we'll be talking about. Now, you can't see the letters so well. You kind of see them uh, being faded out because of this green screen, but uh, we got some pretty cool shirts. You know, we're looking at some of the key volunteers. We actually want to get you guys out some good stuff, have you become part of the team. So uh, fasten your seatbelts because what we're going to do is we're going to do some things pretty much web-based right now. We're going to run you through all of our platforms, all of the things that we do for Connected to the Case, how we're going to use this to solve crime. And the biggest thing here is, folks, we're not vigilantes. We're not in the justice business. We're simply in the case closure business. So before we get started, um, looking here at the uh, everything sounds good, looks good, great, audio's good, uh, being recorded. Hey, let me give you a little bit about my background so you understand why uh, I'm passionate about this. Uh, I'll speak for Sean since he's on, um, uh, he's on the other side of the chat right now. But I spent 18 years in state and local law enforcement, came from the great state of Kansas. I was a detective, a state trooper, investigated many of these cases that we've got profiled in our system right now. Um, after moving out to Virginia in 2000, I spent a lot of time after 9-11 working on the uh, a lot of intelligence-related things. And so uh, in the intelligence and justice community. So, you know, we all have a passion to do this. And Sean and I met actually through Twitter. Uh, on a case, uh, some information I wrote about MS-13, I put out a tweet. Sean was an associate producer at America's Most Wanted, ended up being one of the publicists. Um, we ended up uh, talking about this, ended up working a lot together. And now between me, Sean, John Fels, who's our other co-founder at Crowdsourced Investigations, um, we put together Connected to the Case. Now we're working with a lot of great people that are out there that came from America's Most Wanted, from law enforcement. So what we want to show you to, guys tonight are some of the things that we've built, um, how you're going to be able to help us do these. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll talk about a plan for action. And actually, uh, I'm actually going to show you a real case that we're working on right now. In fact, you folks out there that are very familiar with the Morgan Harrington case, give you guys a preview of what we're going to be launching tomorrow and how this is going to work. So why don't we get started here? and take a look and make sure is everybody uh, up to speed here. So looking good. All right, so let's do this. You're going to see me. I'm going to become kind of small down in the corner here as we go to our web page here. So this is the main website for Connected to the Case. And if you guys don't mind, it's getting cold out here. I have to have a cup of tea every now and then because, folks, it's getting chilly. And if you're out there in the Midwest anywhere, I bless you because uh, you're going to get hit with 10 to 20 inches of snow. So... Let's dive in here. So this is the main page. You'll get to it at connectedtothecase.com or c2case.com. That'll bring you to our home page here. And if you can see right here, one of the first cases we're highlighting uh, is the suspect that's in the Morgan Harrington case. Now, why did we pick Facebook to do this? And why is our system based around Facebook here? Well, when you think about it, Facebook works because it creates connections between people based on things that they have in common, things that they like, things of mutual interest. When I looked at a criminal case, a criminal case had the same elements, whereas Facebook, you've got friends, and those friends went to school somewhere, they were born somewhere, they lived somewhere. Well, guess what? In a criminal case or a missing person case, that person was also born somewhere, lived somewhere, went to school somewhere, has certain likes, likes a certain sports team, uh, may have been in certain locations at certain times, you know, like in Philadelphia uh, in July of 2000. You know, we know for sure that they were there. So we want to do as much as we can to create connections. So this is very much now about creating connections. So when you first log in, you'll see things that say top cases, nearby cases, and then followed cases. So we have three ways of looking at this. You'll see over here on the right side is our Twitter feed. 
So any hashtag or any Twitter you mark with a pound C2 case in there, you'll see it there. It's going to show up in our stream here. It's a way for us to check. And then our blog, uh, our Intel Center down here is where Sean and I and now John Lieberman, who used to, was one of the correspondents on America's Most Wanted, now is on Howard Stern. Uh, and headline news. So uh, he's going to be one of our uh, guest bloggers too. So this is where we're going to provide you additional information. Along the bottom down here, we have our connected to the case most wanted, which are um, the top 15 U.S. Marshals uh, wanted by the U.S. Marshals, the FBI top 10. We'll be adding more categories as we go along. One of my big passions, unsolved officer down, as somebody who's got friends whose names are on the wall and have been to a few funerals, um, we actually go back in time, we look at all the cases, and we're back to 1996 right now, all the unsolved officer down cases, and we want to bring some closure to those folks. I mean, we, we've got to protect the good guys, the cops, the people who are out there to save us. Uh, press and media contacts, and then uh, cases closed um, as they come along. So let's, let's go back here and let's take a look at top cases. So when you log in, one of the things you'll see is here's my name. Yeah, I'm from the Ashburn, Virginia area. So it pulls up and it pulls cases for me. Um, that are uh, going to be relevant to us right now. So let's let's take a look at this right here. So um, we're going to pull up the. Uh, here we go. I got to remember too that I've got so many things streaming off this. The uh, the the page may be a little slow, but that's okay. Uh, we'll pull up the information. So if you can see right here, here's the main case profile. What we have here is the case brief, the victim profile, and the suspect profile. So when we look here, the other thing we have here is we have all the different pictures. Uh, of the suspect. So here's one with the beard, one without a beard. It'll give you information. Pictures of our victim, Morgan Harrington. Uh, the Swarovski ne necklace that she was wearing the night she disappeared, a very distinct and uh, uh, kind of necklace. Uh, probably still in the possession of the suspect, possibly as a trophy. The digital camera she was using that night. So we can put a lot of information in here, and we put publicly available information. We don't, we don't uh, put case information that... Uh, hey, uh, the body was found a certain way, or this is the method uh, of death, or this is the type of weapon that was used. And the reason we don't do that is, number one, we want to stick with publicly available information so that we're never restricted from covering a case. And number two is I can't connect to it. Uh, you know, as a citizen, if I'm in there, I can't make a connection based on the fact that a certain knife was used or the body was found a certain way or she was wearing a red dress or he was wearing a blue scarf. You can't connect to that on social media. What do we connect to? Places, dates, location, time, demographics, and relations. Do I have a relation because uh, are we related because we worked in the same place, went to school in the same place? So those are the things that we put there. So on the case brief, you'll see here we provide a lot of information. Uh, you'll see here is that uh, there's a YouTube video, and we're going to cover all of these uh, platforms here. Here's a YouTube video. Here's Storify. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Storify, but Storify is a social media platform that allows you to curate multiple social media elements and bring them onto a single location. Pinterest. Pinterest isn't just for, um, you know, ladies to go up and post pictures. The biggest, you know, I think 85% of the users are ladies. We're finding out that a lot of people are using Pinterest. A lot of police departments are using it as well, putting up information on wanted people, missing people. So, uh, guys, don't be afraid. You know, um, you're, be safe in your masculinity, but hop onto Pinterest, create an account, because you're going to find ways to repin. And there are a lot of people out there interested in helping you uh, solve crime. Foursquare, for those of you guys who use Foursquare, I use everything that's on here uh, between all of us on Team C2C. We use these things. So Foursquare is a location-based application that allows you to check in at a location, allows your friends to know where you're checking in. It's a way of sharing information. But it's also a way of uh, leaving tips. So I'm going to show you a way that you can actually leave a tip at a business to create awareness about a particular case that you happen to be supporting. Again, and then uh, Pinterest. So with Pinterest, what we had there was we have uh, unsolved homicides, and then we had the Morgan Harrington case. And then Twitter hashtag, you'll see down here, for Morgan's case, we have uh, HSTNG, which stands for Help Save the Next Girl. This was an initiative that was born out of Morgan's disappearance. There's a site called... Uh, uh, help save the next girl .com, and you can follow them on Twitter at, at save the next girl. It's a great way to find out what's going on in this case. But here's the basic facts of the case allows you down here on Facebook to add comments, and uh, you can post those comments to Facebook as well, or you can leave them on the site. But it's a great way to interact. So, our victim profile this will tell you information about uh, Morgan Harrington, height, weight, hair, and eye color because you still need context. You can see a picture like this. But it would make a difference if you recall seeing somebody whether or not they were six foot two or five foot two. So 
We also want to provide some context. Last known location. So here is the place as to where we know that she was last seen. We know that she was seen at 295 Massey Road, which is John Paul Jones Arena. Uh, that's the Metallica concert. We know her body was found at 1860 Anchorage Road in that area, the, the farm about 10 miles south. So we have two locations that Morgan's connected to. And as other people connect to these locations, they'll also be made aware. And the other thing we have, too, is we have a nationwide toll-free number, 855-TIPS-C2C. So uh, it's a toll-free number. One of the things that we've discovered um, uh, during our work with Sean's work at America's Most Wanted, my work as a detective, and I actually used to answer the Crime Stoppers phone, even though you have Crime Stoppers, a lot of people are reluctant to call if they think it's being answered by the police or by the authorities. They, they like that anonymity. And, and uh, from Chantal Roche, who's our hotline operator, uh, from AMW that's working with us now, we know that people a lot of times will give you more information. They'll give you their callback information. In other words, their name, phone number, a way to reach them back. So if law enforcement has questions, we can call them back and get information. We also have a web-based form. So if you want to just leave a web tip, again, the Internet has no concept of distance. We can leave this information on a web form. I can submit it from anywhere in the world because we actually have a, a lot of people on there. I may pull up the map here in just a little bit and let you guys see. Um, uh, it's a secret, but uh, maybe I'll let you guys see. So uh, that is um, uh, the that is our main connected to the case site. There's a lot more we can go into detail on that, but since you guys have it, uh, one of the things you'll see down here are two of our partners, the Officer Down Memorial Page and Praetorian Group, their lab. So we've been working with folks uh, to help build this out. So, uh, But get on the site, take a look at it, and in, and in Morgan's case, just so that you guys know, there's a $150,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction in this case. We know that uh, people will help because of one of three reasons, because of uh, it's the right thing to do, they're good citizens, uh, money is always uh, a motivator, or revenge. So that's in time immemorial. Those are the three things that have uh, motivated people to leave tips on cases. So we want to be able to accommodate anybody's needs or anybody's reason for giving information to help close out a case. So, but the thing is, once you go to the site, once you click with, click connect with Facebook that first time, we you agree to give us uh, permission to pull certain information out of your Facebook profile. And one of the things we do with that is we start looking at location. So we start. You'll see a message pop up here. As you can see up in the window, so here I have a new connection. Why? This case is Bethany Ann Decker, one of the cases I'm working on with the Loudoun County Sheriff's. It gives me a connection there, and I've eliminated a lot of the other messages there. Uh, just left this one here so you guys could see it. But it says, why do I have a connection? Because there's three miles between me and a missing person's last known location, and three miles between me and where a crime occurred. So she was last seen at the same place the crime occurred. Now, the crime could occur in one place, and she was there, but she could have been seen in another place, let's say a day later. Um, so we want to be able to give that kind of information, too. So uh, here's a good message center. This is a way for you to come back and check and see if new cases have been input that allow you to make a connection to the system. So we've kind of spent the first few minutes of this talking about the website because the website is what drives everything. We do everything to drive people to this website to make connections because there has to be one central place where we make those connections. Facebook wouldn't be as effective as it is, nor would Twitter be as effective as it is, or, or YouTube, if you had to go to 50 separate sites to get this information. It's one site, one uh, domain name, c2case.com or connected to the case.com, one place to come input the information, input the cases, and for you to see if you're connected to the case. So hopefully that makes sense, uh, getting some good comments here. Uh, Amanda's reaching out saying, hi, Sean, uh, nice website. Thank you, guys. Um, John Feltz uh, and Sean are some of the brains behind the website. I'm just the on-air talent, as you can tell. No, but uh, we uh, now you can see Sean's name. So Sean's got his name in purple there. So uh, you guys, but Ed, Sean is a tremendous source of uh, information. Like I said, he was on the show for seven years, America's Most Wanted, worked a lot with John Walsh, worked a lot with the U.S. Marshals. So between us all, you know, we're here to make a difference um, and help you guys. So Anyway, that's the main site. So let's take a quick look now at our Facebook page. Again, this is just something that you guys can go to. We don't have to be uh, on here for you guys to do that. Um, but I'll just give you a quick idea here. Here's our, um, you'll see that our main site, we always want to put that number out there. And we have a philosophy, click, connect, share, and solve. You got to click on the website. You click on Facebook. You connect to other people. When you do that, you share. Share your story. Share this story with everybody else. And then if you click, connect, and share, you'll end up solving the case. So um, 
We want to get people on there. You see we're up to 23,779 people. Not bad. Uh, Morgan Harrington's group has about the same number of people. Only 3% of groups on Facebook have more than 10,000 followers. So uh, we're in good rarefied company, but we want to keep growing it out because the more people we have, the more connections we make, the better of a chance that we're going to solve a case. So you guys, but uh, make sure that you go here. You'll see that we've got some things on here, some videos, you stream live, Pinterest, events, Twitter. So make sure on this too that you register for events. Join the crowd here on us with us on Ustream and you'll be registered then uh, for future events. So I'm going to close out a couple of these windows as we go along. Now here's what I'm going to play for you and you should hear um, the audio. So I'm going to play you real quick. This uh, um, I do the introduction and John Lieberman does the voiceover. But let me play you, give you an example of what we do when we put together a case. Because when we do it, we just don't do one or two things. We try and do... Uh, and that's the reason we need you as volunteers. We want to do help everybody. So why don't you guys take just a minute, listen to this, and then uh, as you're doing that, I'm going to respond to some comments. It's about two minutes long. This is Morgan Wright, Chief Crime Fighter, connected to the case with your one minute most wanted update. And now our senior crime correspondent, John Lieberman. On October 17, 2009, Morgan Harrington was abducted from John Paul Jones Arena at the University of Virginia last seen at 9.20 p.m. Her body was found three months later in a remote field. Police are searching for this man, described as a black male, 25 to 35 years old, 5'9 to 6 feet tall, 180 to 220 pounds. There's a $150,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction. The suspect was linked through DNA from an earlier sexual assault in Fairfax City, Virginia on September 24, 2005. The suspect had a beard at the time, but most likely has altered his appearance. Morgan Harrington wore this very unique Swarovski necklace to the Metallica concert she disappeared from. It has not been recovered and still may be in the possession of the suspect as a trophy. Morgan also had a red Kodak digital camera for taking pictures at the concert. It too has not been located. Morgan disappeared from John Paul Jones Arena at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville while attending a Metallica concert. Morgan's body was found on January 26, 2010, approximately 10 miles south in a remote farm field. Authorities believe the suspect had prior knowledge of this location. If you have information on this case, call 855-TIPS-C2C or visit c2case.com slash Morgan Harrington and leave a tip. You can remain anonymous. Help. So that, that's the end of it there. I'm going to uh, kind of pause it, but um, uh, hopefully you guys like it. World premiere of this tonight. And now while we're here, let me show you a couple things. Um, when you're in... When you're in YouTube, obviously when you're in Facebook, you can share these cases. Um, here's the place where you can share. Now, a lot of people don't realize sometimes you click this little arrow down here, and you can see that you, now you've got Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Tumblr, Blogger, uh, MySpace. Anybody use MySpace anymore? Oh, well, Reddit. If you're not familiar with Reddit, you should. LinkedIn, Pinterest. So you have multiple different ways that you can leave information. But when you do, make sure there's always a call to action. Visit the URL. Click here. Go look at the case. If you have information, call this number. Never ever just say, hey, here's the link. You know, uh, there's an old saying in journalism and in media, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Tell people here, look at this video. When you get done looking at this video, click and share it with three friends. You know, give them a specific action. We want to make sure uh, that um, everybody takes action on this. So that's Facebook. So hopefully you guys like that. Um, our channel there has uh, a lot of videos on it as well, too. We'll be adding more videos as we go along. We have some other cases. There's Bethany Decker, Unsolved Officer Down, uh, some suspects for the U.S. Marshals we're looking for. So you all take a look at that and uh, make sure you share it. Twitter, uh, what need I say about Twitter other than you guys know how to use Twitter. However, one of the things I want to uh, make you aware of is if you take a look here at the hashtag right here, c 2 case one of the reasons that we want to um, categorize these tweets, and, and with Morgan's case, we're using Help Save the Next Girl, H-S-T-N-G, the hashtags, because you may not be following the person, they may not be following you, but I can follow a hashtag of interest. So when I click C2 case, one of the things it's going to bring up for me, it's going to search that, and then it's going to pull up. There are all the tweets now with C2 case 
Um, and if I scrolled through a bunch of them, you would see that there are other people who retweeted that have it in there. So uh, we use hashtags a lot to help categorize these tags. And if we do a good job, we can turn it into a trending topic, which means, which means even more people pick up on it. So one of the things we'll be disseminating with Morgan's case, we're going to launch, we have a strategy document and a, a training document that teaches you how to use all these things. Actually got some suggested ways of how to write your Facebook uh, post to share, your Twitter post to share. You always want to put things in, put the URL in there, URL in there, which one of the things I didn't do, let me pop back to Morgan's case here real quick. Um, one of the things that you'll notice up here, if you didn't, we have a, a personalized URL. So if you go to c2case.com slash Morgan Harrington, or connected to the case.com slash Morgan Harrington. It brings you right to this case. You don't have to worry about a fancy number or a long number. Uh, you can take a look at, just go right to connected to the case.com or c2case.com slash, and then the name of the case, Morgan Harrington, Bethany, De Bethany Decker, Thomas Woods, Eric Toth, Derek Brown, a lot of the cases that we have in here right now. So uh, make sure that you peruse that. Pinterest. Now, I actually, at first, I was a little worried, Curious about how the heck am I going to use Pinterest? And then I started saying, look, we'll divide it into boards. We'll get people start repinning this. Um, so we have, you see here, here's our main page here. It's at Pinterest.com slash C2C Most Wanted. Uh, but I tell you, one of the things that I realized too, and I'm sure you guys are the same way, Crimes Against Children um, got a lot of activity. I had like 300 likes on that in one day because sexual predators, especially violent sexual predators, there's no place for those guys in society, especially when they're on the run, right? So... Uh, we want to make sure that we bring uh, these guys to justice as well. So you'll see that there's pins on there. So we have a board for unsolved homicides, one for missing and endangered. That's the Bethany Decker case. But we've established a separate board just for Morgan here. It's called Morgan Harrington. So when you go inside that board, one of the things that Pinterest does is when you put the amount in there, it will put a banner across the side. So in this case, there's a $150,000 reward. Here's pictures of the suspect, pictures of Morgan. When you click on that, now you've got some options here. You can see here I left a comment. It said make sure to click on Morgan's picture for the for the full case profile. By clicking on this picture, and I'll show you in a second, it takes you then back to the C2C site with her full case profile on there. But you can like it. You can tweet it. You can embed it. If you have your own blog, you can actually take the embed code on this if you're a techie. Put it in there. You can email it to other people. Uh, you can see other pins that are on this same board right here. Um, you can see who it came from where it's been pinned to, who's repinned it right here, um, how many people like this. So, uh, Kenny, you're my first like there. Rock on, dude. You the man. So, uh, but when we click on this case, now, the other thing you can do, you can repin this, which means those of you who are familiar with uh, Pinterest means I can put it onto another board. So here's all the other boards that I could put it on if I wanted to. Or when I go to Morgan's picture here and click it, guess where it takes me? It takes me, bing, it'll pull it up here in a second. Take me right back to more. There we go. Right back to Morgan's case. And you'll see here, if I want to connect with this case, connect with Facebook, I'm coming in through Pinterest. So it doesn't recognize me at this point, even though I'm connected on the other one. So, but just do that. Make sure you share this and repin this with lots of people. Uh, and like I said, we have lots of boards there uh, when you come back and take a look at what it is we're doing. So that is Pinterest. And then one of the last things, I really enjoy this one too, because it's something that we can add to uh, in real time. And it's called Storify. Storify is a way to curate. In other words, you control what goes on to there. So you can see uh, one of the things I did is I blogged um, and, and tracked the Chris Dorner case out in Los Angeles. And one of the reasons I did that is because the first officer that was killed was Michael Crane, was from the Riverside Police Department. The chief of police out there is a personal friend of mine, Chief Diaz. He's on the community policing committee with me. So we all took this very personally. We wanted to help out, so I had a lot of information. But let's pull up again. Uh, we're using uh, Morgan Harrington as a, as a training uh, example here, too, but as a real case, one that we're doing. So we can give information here. I pulled this picture from uh, the Women's Center at Virginia, and it's one of her online pictures. But you can see we can do things. We can like it. We can comment about it. We can share not only individual elements in this, but we can share the whole story. There's a way to share. Uh, so when we share, how do I want to share it? Uh, do you want, can I embed the whole thing? If so, do I want to do a slideshow or have it do the entire thing? So people can copy, encourage people who are geeky and run blogs to copy and paste this embed code. Um, I could, like I said, I can like it. You can track things here. So the other thing we're going to do is there's been 53 views on Morgan's case. We want to obviously jump that number up because we have multiple ways. Here's uh, connected to the case. This is the actual case that's entered. This is from the site findmorgan.com. Uh, here's from the Roanoke paper. 
So as you can see, what we can do is we can add lots and lots of pictures here. We can add lots of articles. Uh, here's inf And you can add text, so we can actually edit this text in here. Um, there's pictures of the suspect uh, with a beard, without a beard. This guy was identified because his DNA was matched to a 2005 sexual assault. It was matched to DNA found on a t-shirt belonging to Morgan that was discovered after the concert. Here's a picture of a possible route that Morgan took before she was last seen on the Copley Bridge. Uh, right there uh, at the uh, where the train tracks go through. You can embed YouTube videos. Uh, here's the PSA from Metallica. Those guys are stand-up guys, did a good job. So you can see that we can put a lot of information into Storify, and it's a great way for you to share this information uh, with people. So let me come back to full screen here. Uh, give it just a second. There we go. Boom. I zoom back in. You guys like that? You like the green screen? Isn't that cool? That's why you can't wear a black shirt on this. A duh, I just thought about that, right? So, um, hey, but how are we doing out there? It looks like we've got a few uh, comments out there. Um, we're yeah, and Kenny, we are ready to release this. So let's. Why don't we? Um, I'll 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 tee this up in Facebook. We will launch it at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll do we'll do, do the Facebook launch, and then uh, on the site, I'll work with you. We'll post the strategy document and the training document that shows people how to walk through every single step of this to replicate basically what we did here tonight. Um, you folks are going to be able to do because all these tools are free. They're accessible to you. Um, just some things that we ask is that when you do this, um, make sure that you include ways for people to take action. There always has to be what we call a CTA, a call to action. Always tell people what you want them to do. Here's a link. Share it with three friends. Make sure you watch the video, then share it with three people. When you tweet, you know, call this number if you have information. View Morgan's case. You know, put the hashtag in there so we can uh, track it. You guys track the hashtag too. That's not something weird. It's just not just privy to us. Follow the hashtag HSTNG. Help save the next girl. See who else is connecting to that. Reach out to them. Have them join the site. Have them view the case. You know, this is a very easy way. You don't have to get involved to be involved, right? So uh, you can sit here from your keyboard. You can sit here from a smart pad, an iPad. Oh, actually, you know, one thing I did forget to show you. I'm sorry, I'm going to pull this up here real quick. Um, I think I closed it out accidentally. It was Foursquare. Uh, let's go back to the, um, uh, let's go back to the uh, screen real quick. Or no, did I? I think I did show you Foursquare. Did I do that? Um, uh, actually, I don't think I did. Let me go back here real quick. Let's go back to the uh, uh, view here. And the reason I wanted to view this is that um, when you use Foursquare to check in and leave a message, the other thing I forgot to show you guys is uh, these are pictures that I posted as I've left tips at certain businesses. But the other thing we have here is I have lists. So if you guys go here, and it'll be in the material we provide, there's two lists we're running right now. One is the Virginia County, uh, Virgi or Loudoun County, Virginia Unsolved Murders, Albemarle County Unsolved Murders. So when you go there on that list, you can share that list with other people. It'll tell you where it happened, John Paul Jones Arena. There's a picture. It's saved. There's a link here. If you want to read more, there it is. So um, uh, let's make sure that, and I'm sorry, my creaky chair. Sorry about that, Amanda. Um, hey, look, it's... It's nice. I'll, I will oil it just for you uh, next time. But it's a way to make sure it's my audio test, too. It's a way to make sure that you guys can hear the audio. So, but you can see where it happened. You can go. I've actually left tips at a couple businesses in Charlottesville already. So when people check in there, these tips will pop up. So like I say, a lot of good stuff there um, that we're doing. So uh, let's go back to the full screen here. Here I come. So uh, let me ask you guys something. What do you think? Uh, just give us your comments. Uh, let us know what else you guys think need to be here. Uh, if you guys like what you see so far, make sure, again, so here's your call to action. Have your friends go to here, and I'm going to put this in the uh, chat room. Go there, join teamc2c.com. It's our recruiting site. It tells you the positions we're looking for. There's a bounty on web developers. That's right, we still issue bounties. Somebody that sends a web developer our way that can help us out, once we talk with them, we say, you're our guy give you $100 just for referring a web developer to us. That's how important it is to develop the platform. We've got lots of people helping out with media, with social media, and our CSI agents, our case agents. But what we really, really need are web developers. We've got one kid actually at UVA, one of Sean's friends, helping us out, going to do some recruiting. But uh, make sure you go to that site, join uh, teamc2c.com, and uh, get that out to the rest of us. So, hey, guys, here's what we're going to do. I promise you we start on time. promise you we're going to end on time. we got one minute left, so want to be respectful of your time. 
This uh, session will be saved. It'll be available for playback, so send your friends to it. We didn't get all the people I wanted here, but we still had a lot of good folks here. So uh, let's get more people trained on this. Uh, Kenny, I'll reach out to you after this. And Amanda, let's talk about launching this tomorrow. Let's talk about getting the documents out into the hands of the volunteers. The people who are going to do this, have them read it so that they now have a playbook. They have, instead of saying, what should I do? The last thing in your world you want to do is give somebody this, which is a, a blank sheet of paper. You don't want to just give somebody a whoops, a blank sheet of paper. What you want to do is give them something they can work with. Here's part of the playbook, actually. Steps you can take, things you can link, things you can do, words you can use, things you can say. We want to give very, very um, prescriptive things. So, And hey, feel free to freelance on us. Don't worry about that. But take and make sure you get the elements in there. Give the URL. Give a call to action. Ask people to take an action. Let's solve this case because I know we can do it. All right, you guys with me? So uh, could we start and end with all the information? Uh, which information would you like to end with? Uh, I can tell you all the ways that we, you can connect with us. Um, just go to our main site, c2case.com. Uh, that's the main website. You can find us on Facebook. Um, we are with you, event. Um, didn't I still don't get that, Amanda. So um, video ended, yes. Uh, oh, <laughs> the video ended. Start an event. I may not be getting it. So uh, anyway, I'll tell you what. We're done for tonight. I'll end this recording. And then uh, we will be back in touch with you guys. But uh, follow us at C2Case on Twitter. Uh, log in or check in with us on Facebook at Connected to the Case. And then uh, we will see you guys on the next training session. Adios, muchachos. Thanks a lot.